Regard from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And it's time to take a look at the best phones of 2013. However, we're taking a bit of a different approach here. Instead of just giving you a top 5, 10 list, we're actually going to look at what types of phones would be perfect for the type of person that you might be. But enough of the chit chat. Why don't we go ahead and jump right into the categories? Whether you like just your simple word puzzles or you play Dead Trigger 2 at the highest possible quality settings, this is a phone made for the gamer in all of us. And yes, our pick is the Google Nexus 5. With a great display backed by LG's display prowess, a wonderful processing package in the Snapdragon 800, and the Adreno 330 for high graphics allows for some very great gaming capabilities. The main reason here, however, is the price. It is a pretty easy entry for great performance, and you have money left over for plenty of games. Our runner-up in this category is the Sony Xperia Z1. It brings many of the same capabilities along with even better battery life, a better camera, and expandable storage. Also, DualShock controller support built in doesn't hurt either. However, it does have a much higher price point. Our next best smartphone for 2013 is for the workaholic. Basically the person who needs to get a lot done and needs a companion that can get a lot of things done. And for the workaholic, we have to give the crown to the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. It is an executive phone with an executive look. However, it also comes with all of the tools that you would need to get the work done. It continues to lead the phablet space, especially with the inclusion of the S Pen. Not only does it come with a bunch of new features that make it easier for even the average user to get into the S Pen, it also allows for a lot of multitasking. Our runner-up in this category is the LG G2. While it doesn't have the S Pen, plenty of the multitasking tools included in the G2 are similar to what are included in the Galaxy Note 3, and it all comes in a smaller, perhaps slightly more accessible package due to its smaller size compared to the Note 3. If your phone is basically your entertainment hub for everything from YouTube to Google Play Music to Spotify to Netflix even, then this next phone is one of the best on 2013 and is made especially for you, the entertainment lover. It should come as a little surprise that the HTC One gets the nod here due to a superior audio experience. The boom sound front-facing speakers are just stellar performers, and they allow for standalone media consumption through just the phone itself. And couple that with a 1080p resolution screen at 4.7 inches that keeps it at a great quality in an actually pretty accessible package nonetheless. Our runner-up in this category is basically the step aside from the HTC One, and that is the Samsung Galaxy S4. The Samsung Galaxy S4 Super AMOLED display provides high contrast in a 5-inch form factor. Media looks great across the board on this particular screen, so if you need an experience that might be just a little bit bigger than the one that is in the HTC One, the Samsung Galaxy S4 stands right alongside it. You get all of your materials together. You're super excited to get out to your brand new college campus. But after paying for the books, paying for your extra materials, and not to mention the college tuition, you find yourself a little strapped for cash. So this next best phone of 2013 is made for you, the student. Was there really any doubt what the phone would be here? Of course, it's the Moto G. With great performance at a very affordable price point, this is one of the most undeniable steals in the Android market today. And in the market of smaller, lower-end phones, not only does the $179 base price point truly set it apart, but a great 720p display quality and a good performing quad-core Snapdragon processor are just icing on top of the cake. However, if money is no object and you are able to pay for that much higher price point, then our runner-up in this category is the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. The Note 3 is great for students, for all of the same reasons that it is good for workaholics. Of course, granted, they don't stay on Facebook all day. So you've got all of your gear on for a nice run. Or maybe you even have a backpack on for that hike. Well, in this case, you want to be one with nature, so what phone do you bring along with you? Well, when it comes to the outdoorsy type, we have found that the Sony Xperia Z1 definitely fits the bill. With ingress protection, or IP67 certification, all that means that this phone can brave the elements much better than most other phones, and it still manages to look like a very sleek device despite all of that protection. Indeed, the Sony Xperia Z1 can take a tumble, it can even take a splash, and in terms of our drop test, it took a thrashing and still came out looking about as good as it went in. 
However, if you do want to kind of hit it on the nose here with the more rugged type of phone, our runner-up is of course the Samsung Galaxy S4 Active. If you want a phone that actually seems catered for the rugged terrain, then that is exactly what the S4 Active was made for, as it comes with the same IP certifications as the Xperia Z1 in a body that likely matches your hiking gear. Now this is a category that I might somewhat put myself in, because it's the category that tends to try to be unique, tries to be the early adopter for something that might really blow up later. This is the best phone of 2013 for the trendsetter. And after much deliberation, we have found that the best phone for a trendsetter is the LG G Flex. This is the phone trying to do something new and manages to do it with some style while never failing to be a great phone underneath it all. That curve is very, very obvious from the get-go, but it does allow for durability along with a self-healing back. A flexible plastic OLED display allows for this type of form factor to happen, and it is a pretty early adoption along with that self-healing back. But underneath, it is a wonderfully executed 720p display powered by the high-performing Snapdragon 800. Our very close runner-up in this category is the HTC One. It is an aluminum-clad smartphone that actually pretty much stands alone in the Android space. The HTC One gets points for its own stylish flair, and is a phone that we are always happy to have in our hands, and usually does the trick when it comes to turning people's heads. Our next category is for the gadget lover. Essentially what we're looking for is a phone that you would be immensely happy to have, and have right alongside all of the other gadgets you call your own. And in this category, we have to give it to the Moto X. See, it taught us that super high-end specifications aren't needed to have a superior user experience. And it has a highly accessible smaller body that makes for a companion you can always easily have on hand. However, it doesn't slouch in terms of its features as the extra features Motorola put into the almost stock Android build adds points for being actually practical and highly utilized by even most average users. However, as long as we're talking about features, if you want the most possible, then perhaps the Samsung Galaxy S4 is for you and is the runner-up in this category. Maybe every new addition that Samsung did throw into the S4 will make you happy. Everything from the air gestures to the air views, to the smart pauses, the smart scrolls, the IR blaster, and even the S Health functionality. If that is all useful to you, then the Samsung Galaxy S4 is your pick. So let's say there's a shot that you want to get. Something just looks really beautiful, but you don't have your DSLR or your compact camera. So what phone do you have in your back pocket to take that perfect shot? Well, this is the best phone of 2013 for the photographer. And in this regard, we have to give it to the LG G2. A 13 megapixel optic package comes with many different modes in the app to allow for creativity. HDR, panorama, burst modes, the works. However, what is really of note here is a great implementation of optical image stabilization, which proves how important such a feature will be in the coming year for other camera smartphones. Not only does it allow for some great stabilization for your shaky hands, it also provides some pretty great photos as a result. The quality is pretty undeniable here. And also the bonus with the LG G2 is that it just also manages to be a damn good phone too. Because you can compare it to some other phones that try to be more like cameras than phones and pretty much fall flat on their face. The Sony Xperia Z1 is the runner-up here and gets the nod for a very high-performing 20.7 megapixel shooter that is enhanced by user-installable add-ons that provide a possibly consistently evolving photography experience. Its pictures are also not too shabby either, and with that super high megapixel count, there are definitely quite a few things you can do with the very large pictures that come out of this phone. Now we would be remiss if we overlooked what is one of the most important categories of the year and that is the Android Purist. This is probably the smallest surprise of the year because of course, the Nexus 5 takes the crown for being the phone for the Android Purist. We wanted to give it a nod primarily because it really is the best and quintessential Android experience available right now, and it only comes from the Nexus. Android 4.4 KitKat brings optimizations with a further elegantly integrated search interface with voice controls built in to boot. The phone is also a great performer with very powerful specifications, and the camera, even if it started off a little bit wonky, got greatly improved with a new, very recent Point one update. We give the runner-up spot here to the Moto X. With Google's backing, the Moto series is still a great representation of almost stock Android, with useful and well-executed Motorola extras. 
And so there you have it for all of the best phones of 2013, catered specifically to the type of person you might be. Now we pretty much covered a lot of different types of people, and if you think that a different phone should have one for a particular category, you can definitely let us know inside the comments below. Just feel free to sound off and explain to us why you think a different